So, um, there's this tweet that I really want to talk about. <clears throat> and this only is being talked about again because of the most recent fighting game beta that just happened for a game called DNF Duel, which is based off of a popular MMO of some kind. I've never heard of DNF Duel. I've never played DNF Duel. I'm not going to lie to you guys and act like I know anything at all about DNF Duel. I, like, I don't. What's happening? Why is this, um, why is this like this? Oh, you know why? Because this needs to be down here. There we go. Um, yeah, so it has very simple inputs. And I don't know if you guys are fighting game players or have played a fighting game, but usually they require quarter circle motions or half circle motions or charge motions or the stupid Z motion or the pretzels from KOF or I could pull out an arcade stick and show you. There's no point in all that. Those are uh, some sort of like, a, they're like a skill barrier. They are um, a means to make a move that is very powerful, balanced differently, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I also don't mind accessibility in fighting games, even if that has to do with um, simple inputs, right? I, my, one, of my, one of my favorite like modern 2D fighters is Fantasy Strike. I wish I had more characters. I wish I had a black male character. And I wish it wasn't fucking dying slowly all the time. Uh, but... I like the game and it literally has three attack buttons and a jump button. And if you don't enable a jump button and you just set jump to up, then you straight up only have, you only need three buttons to play the game, right? There's other buttons on the controller that you can use because you can still set the jump. You can still, uh, you can set throw to a button. Or I think you're forced to set throw to a button, throw and super to buttons, but you don't have to. You can just not use them. So it's a three button fighting game. And there is um, air attacks and ground attacks. That's it. Almost not unlike Super Smash Brothers. Now, uh, let's, 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 I guess let's quote the tweet. Seeing people hate on easy inputs in fighting games is so exhausting. It's 2021. Give that old ass mentality a rest. Accessibility keeps competitive, keeps a competitive scene thriving. You can have easy inputs and still have a lot of depth for the game. Okay, so I put out a video. I think it was earlier this month or maybe it was last month. Let me turn the music down. I put out a video either early oh shit you know what i just realized no one can type i'm so dumb feel free um i put out a video either uh late last month or early this month where i was referring to project l as a very simple fighting game that they are they've already discussed that they want to make the input simple but that the depth will be in other places right uh and i talked about other fighting games that kind of work the same way uh games like Super Smash Brothers. Hi from 16 months. I appreciate you, Nitro Libre. Thanks so much, Nick. You're a homie, dude. So when it comes to fighting games, they don't have to be difficult in inputs because there are so many other things that make fighting games difficult, right? If you tell a casual, you need to understand stage positioning, awareness, uh, life leads, meter, ma meter management, all of those things, they might already be turned off. It could happen, right? Remembering how much time is left in a round, where you are on the stage, how to position your character, what your best buttons are, what your normals are, how to, like, when you should use your super. What does your super even do? How do I, what do I, it's one button, but like, what does it do? I gotta press it. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. They blocked it. Block punishment, whiff punishment, throwing, throw teching, meaties. Holy shit. Woza, thank you so much for the seven. Appreciate you guys, right? There's already so many things in fighting games that make them difficult inherently. Games do not need difficult inputs for them to be, um, for them to be, uh, for them to have depth, right? Accessibility is not always a bad thing. Accessibility, as a matter of fact, is a good thing. That is why, um, that is why League and Dota are very popular games. And I'm not saying the League and Dota are easy. I'm not throwing that out there, but they have accessibility in a way that most fighting games don't. The accessibility is the free to play, which is another thing we'll talk about today. But right now we're talking about the fact that fighting game players really, really, really get mad. Oh shit, we're talking about Fantasy Strike? Not just Fantasy Strike. Woza, Nitro Libre, you guys are the perfect example. You guys came from a Smash background, right? For anyone who doesn't know how Super Smash Brothers works or has never played it, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Say you've never played Super Smash Brothers. It is a fighting game with two fucking button two two attack buttons two there's a jump button you can jump with up there's a block button so i guess three there is a attack button a special button and a block button and that game 
specifically Super Smash Brothers Melee, has more depth than almost any fighting and, ta and taunt. Please stop. <laughs> and and in that game. Super Smash Bros. Melee and Smash 64 specifically have more depth than most fighting games and start. Please stop. <laughs> have more depth than most fighting games out right now. And ha have more depth than most fighters that have ever existed. Honestly, if I'm being real, Super Smash Bros. Melee is one of the most deep fighters of all time. With two fucking attack buttons and a block button. Three buttons. The same amount as Virtual Fighter. Virtual Fighter has punch, kick, and guard. And is probably one of the most depthful of the three and Street Fighter 3. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So Street Fighter 3, uh, Street, Street Fighter 3, Super Smash Brothers Melee, and uh Tekken Tekken 5 or Tekken 6. I think those are some of the deepest fighting games to ever exist. I think it might be, I think it might be five. I don't remember. Don't quote me. But now, when you when you look at the fact that that game is extremely accessible with those easy inputs, what makes it so wrong for a traditional fighter to have easy inputs? What? makes it so wrong i think that this old archaic mindset of fighting games need to have hard inputs because it's part of like fighting games. it i i had to learn how to show you can you need to learn how to show you can okay i got fucking stabbed in the in the back while i was tick throwing people in street fighter 2 in the arcades or i got fucking tased so you need to learn how to do it if you don't know how to fucking properly tick throw and mash dp you're not a real fighting game player it's so dumb it feels like all or nothing compared to the other factors. Life lead, stage positioning, etc. can be learned as you get more comfortable with the game, but execution feels like you have to master it before you can even play sometimes. No, that's not true at all. That is a perception issue. That is absolute perception. That is like saying that if you cannot skill shot with a specific ability in a MOBA, that you cannot play the MOBA. That's not true. You can still walk through lane, use your auto attack, hit minions, learn how to last hit minions, learn how to orb walk, learn jungle rotations. You can learn all that shit, right? But you can't skill shot. Okay, that is a learned skill. That is a skill that over time you can learn it will become system one. But if you don't know it, you can still play a MOBA and enjoy yourself. You just gotta find other buttons. A perfect example was uh, DJ Qbert versus Lupe Fiasco. I wish I could pull up the, I don't know if I have the set, but Lup, uh, DJ Qbert in tight anti-air situations during Street Fighter V's launch, it was very early in Street Fighter V, instead of responding with a Shoryuken, and I think it was a Kin, mat, a kin Mirror match or Kin, kin versus Ryu, he was using Ken's crouching hard punch because it's a serviceable anti-air in the place of a DP when you when you can't do it, when you don't have the system one down to properly respond with an anti-air DP every time. There are alternative measures. Like if you watch the way that I start learning a character, if you guys have kept up with my like S rank runs, I say, okay, let me look at their AA. Cool, it's kind of long. Let me look at their BB. Okay, it's a little stubby. Yo, Vinius, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, I look at their 2K. I look at their 2A. It may, that is a perception issue. That is a perception issue. That does not inherently make fighting games harder or easier. That is something that people like to feel, not that is actually true. What is true is that accessibility makes games more popular. That is why all of these giant, massive battle royale shooting games and MOBAs are bigger than are bigger than fighting games. That's why hard games, hard games are kind of boring. Let's be real here. Legends of Runeterra, Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Way fucking bigger than any fighting game that exists right now. Unless you consider Brawlhalla, right? Because Brawlhalla is fucking massive. But like, outside of Brawlhalla, everything else is tiny. And the reason for that is because, I don't know if you know this, but um, they're free to play. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a form of accessibility that most fighting games don't have so why have a 60 dollars price tag and have hard inputs and want to make people feel bad for having easy inputs and when they don't learn it the right way you make them feel bad and get super toxic fighting game players are so weird it was just like when uh the league fighting game project l got revealed the discourse around people wanting to gatekeep league players when league of legends players inevitably try project l because they want to because they like the characters and the lore and all that stuff maybe they played legend of rune terra and people were like yeah i'm gonna fucking gatekeep these league players they're gonna get fucking stomped and all this shit it's like dude if your prey is is people who have never played the game before you're toxic you're actually toxic and you probably suck at fighting games you don't you don't go outside, you don't go to a place where people meet to garden and say, you know what? I've been gardening for seven years. This guy, he just started, I'm gonna garden on him so hard, he never wants to fucking garden again. Nobody does that. 
Nobody, <laughs> nobody goes out of their way to make an activity that they enjoy not enjoyable for another person. Fighting game players are the fucking weirdest. It's just... It's, it dumbfounds me. It makes zero sense. And the argument of not allowing things to be accessible is, is even crazier. Now, if it was up to me, I would like for games to have both. I'd like for games to have the actual hard input and the easy input, right? Like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus and DNF Duel, they do it perfectly. You get, uh, you get certain benefits for using the original input. That's tight. It's in the spirit of fighting games. But for those who don't care about that and just want to do the cool thing, you just do the cool thing by pressing a button and then a direction. We've had simple modes in fighting games before. Uh, Capcom versus, I believe it was Capcom versus SNK2 on the GameCube. There was a mode, there was a groove or an ism, whatever they would call it, where when you press the, st the C stick in one of the directions, you would get a special move, a set special move for that character, right? And you could even cancel into them from normals. So you could go like standing medium kick, standing light punch, and then you, melee has a one button mode? Is that chic? Do you just, do you just mash fair with chic? Are you talking about Marth? I feel like this is a joke about it. I hope this isn't a wobbling joke. God, I hope this isn't a fucking wobbling joke. Wobbling's only one button, right? You just mash A. Like that. Vanilla Melee, there's a one button mode. See, that I didn't even know. I didn't even know that. Um, uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Captain 3 had the simple mode where you can, where you can mash, um, where you can mash, I think, I don't remember what button it is. But it was essentially auto combos from Dragon Ball Fighters. They were very simple, very basic combos. They weren't good. But if you mashed one button, you would go light, medium, heavy, launch, light, medium, heavy, splat. And then if you press a different button, it would give you your specials. So you go light, medium, press back, and like the special button, and you'd get Tatsumaki and Pukia. Then you press the other button. It was just three buttons. You press the other button, and you'd get your fucking super. And no one complained back then about that because it it made it so that you could get into the game and do cool stuff and feel like you were playing even though you weren't playing at the highest level because sometimes people don't care about any of that. And it's wrong to take that away from them just because you had to do it your way. It, when you were born in the fucking 80s and you're a goddamn boomer, you know, like it, just get over it. Let people enjoy fighting games the way that they want. I used to get mad at people for like playing costs, like uh, Creative Souls in, in Soul Calibur 6. And I'm like, dude, they're just trying to enjoy the game. Who gives a fuck? Like, yeah, maybe their character's too small and it's really hard to hit them, but I'm probably a better player than them. We just beat the shit out of them and move on. You know why? Because they're enjoying the game they want to, the way they want to enjoy the game. They want to make the little midget waifu or the little midget husbando and beat people up with a giant axe on a tiny character. That's A-OK. -okay. You know, that's just part of the game. Whatever. If you're a competitive player and you're better than them, you make do. You just keep playing. Right. It is a little obnoxious, but you just keep playing. Someone's beating, twerking on you with simple combos. Maybe you should get better at the game. Someone's literally mashing auto combo at you. I've seen people lose to like better fighting game players in Dragon Ball who are literally just doing the auto combo. They'll do like light, light, medium, medium, special. And it's just like you got bodied by some guy who's not thinking at all. He's beating you with auto combo because he's better than you. All of these simpler ways to play the game do not mean like I want to quote Tony Cannon. Uh, auto combos are sick. I also like auto combos. All right. All right. So I want to quote. I don't know if it was Tony or Tom, but he said, we're not making the game easier to reduce the skill gap or make it so that the newbies will beat the pros. We're doing it to unlock the fun at all skill level. Do you want people to have fun playing fighting game? Do you want people to enjoy your little tiny fucking niche genre? You do? Then shut the fuck up and allow your genre to be accessible to everyone. That simple. The next part, it's a little, it, it like kind of ties right into it. Yeah, you still have to open them up exactly. Like, and I think the, the sick thing about the league fighting game is people are gonna assume that they're just gonna be able to open people up. Right, okay, so I'm gonna be real. I'm a 2D player, I'm a 3D player, right? But uh, I, I play a really fast 3D game. I play Soul Calibur 6, it's relatively fast, right? There's a lot of bum shit, There's, it's craziness, it's wild, you're all over the fucking place, right? And then on the other hand, I play Dragon Ball Fighters and I've played a little bit of Marvel Infinite. I like those games, they're pretty sick. Don't. I don't have Marvel Infinite, so don't ask me to play with you guys. I'd have to learn a bunch of shit. Anyways, what, what, I was, what I'm getting at is I've played faster games, right? So as a fighting game player who's going to play the League fighting game, I'll try it. I'm not going to try the League fighting game and try to skill and try to, like, uh, gatekeep League players. I'm going to try to gatekeep 
2D players that have never played a tag game before. Because they're like, yeah, my sick footsies, my fucking neutral, my fundamentals. I'm going to call assistant mix you. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to do. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> I don't want to gatekeep people who have never played a fighting game before. I want to gatekeep the Street Fighter players or the Sam Show players or the Tekken players. Like, I want to call assistant like, oh, shit, I'm in Blossom. What do I do? And I'm just like, get torqued on, sonny boy. Like, that's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> Oh man, just the idea of it sounds so fun. Uh, on the topic of uh, twerking on people in something league based, uh, there's this no there's another tweet I saw that I just didn't want to get into. I didn't want to um, actually like like it because I'm not trying to be exposed to this shit right here. All the dumb people. Okay, so there's there's two takes to a tweet like this. Mobas being as popular as they are, are such a mystery to me. In a way, they have the same thing that we put that we say push away people from fighting games. Not, not fighting game. Um, execution, matchup knowledge, and mind games all exist in a MOBA. Then on top of that, their character pool is way bigger. That's absolutely true. Now, here is um, here is here is the the wrong take, right? Uh, this is I, I consider this the wrong take because this is a perception issue. Uh, three major things. One important factor: free to play, team based. Easy to play out the gate and consistent updates and patches. Okay, I'll give him the last one. Consistent updates and patches are a plus for some people, a minus for other people, right? Free to play, very important. Team-based doesn't always matter. Some people don't care about team-based stuff. There's still people who play team-based games and ask you to 1v1. I've seen Call of Duty players or even Paladins players. I'll be streaming Paladins and I'm like, hey bro, you want a 1v1? I'm like, this is this is a team-based hero shooter. Why would I want a 1v1? What? No, I don't know. This is a team-based game, bro. What the fuck are you, what do you, what do you want about? Anyways. Right, so those are all perception issues. Those are those are absolutely untrue. Um, and then here's fighting games, don't really promise any of that. Solo cost money, difficult to pick up and play. Wrong perception issue. They're not difficult to pick up and play. Uh, and infrequent updates and paid character releases. True, paid DLC is trash. Uh, so he has some good points in here. He has some very bad points in here. Um, difficult and difficult to pick up and play is absolutely wrong. That's wrong. You just need to know what to look for, right? It, it has nothing to do with the game that the fact that the game is inherently difficult because it's not you I can teach anyone how to Understand the basics of offense in Soul Calibur 6 or in Tekken now building a defense don't ask me how to do that I fucking match. I don't do that shit, right? But the, There's this perception that if you're not winning Then you're not playing the game when it comes to fighting in and this tweet kind of sums that up with that one part difficult to pick up and play Right, and I say that it's it's true, Yorha. You know it's true. Like we can we can teach people A A B B two K two A a backswing blow and a whip punish. We can teach people that it's it's absolutely true. And you're a two B player, so your character has all those things phenomenally. So you better be teaching people that, right? Um, the perception issue there is that they're difficult to pick up and play, and it's because people just assume that if they're not winning, they're not playing the game, right? So say you are playing Tekken, and you start off the game, and you do. A big windy move and your opponent sidesteps and launches you. And they carry you to the corner with Oki, to a wall with Oki, and they kill you at the wall. And then you just say, wow, uh, you just sidestepped my button and launched me and killed me. I didn't get to play. And the next round starts. If you do not immediately throw out a big windy button and sidestep it, you do, I don't know, walk forward block. Or you do a jab. Okay, you don't even you don't even worry about him doing the sidestep launch. You just walk up block. Right, and you block the launcher, or you do walk up jab, and you and you counter hit the launcher with a jab. You are already playing the game. You have made a decision. You have made a decision that is playing the game. That's like saying, "Oh, dude, I keep spawning and running into this one hallway uh, in Call of Duty, and there's a guy camping there, and I got shot and I died. I didn't even get to play." And the next time you walk into that hallway, instead, you throw a grenade first see a hit marker and then you run into the hallway you have now played the game you have made a decision <laughs> the game is being played so it's not difficult to pick up and play right it's not no not in any, any circumstance um but i will say that uh, team base have definitely helps with a lot of stuff people do seem to like team based games and i think the reason why is because they assume that if it's team based they have other excuses like ah oh, dude it wasn't me my fucking team sucked I don't know if you guys know this. Fighting game players have those exact same excuses. Hold on. Hold, hold on. 
Where's my fucking empty stick shell? This this thing doesn't have any buttons, so this is the perfect example. Fuck, fuck, bro. My, my buttons weren't coming out, bro. My, dude, my fucking, my buttons weren't working, bro. Oh my god, I blocked that shit. Dude, I, I swear I matched DP. Bro, I matched DP. Well, how? Oh, dude, it's so laggy. No, I can't. How am I supposed to beat this guy on a fucking two bar, three bar connection, bro? It's way too laggy. Dude, this matchup is free. This matchup is free for my opponent. I, I I I can't I can't win this matchup. This matchup's like fucking nine one, bro. Like shit, I'm gonna take one game out of like ten, bro. Like this matchup's hard. My character's low tier. He's playing a top tier. I can't I can't beat him. The same excuses. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of playing a low tier, so you can hit them with the well. You should beat me. <laughs> my favorite one is I would have blocked out line. You're spitting right now. You're huh? you're spitting. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely spitting, brother. Yeah, so the same the same kind of um, things exist, right? See me at LAN, right? The oh, dude, this, the ping in this match is too high. Oh, my teammates suck, bro. This healer's not even fucking healing me. Where's my support? The same concepts exist in a team-based fighter. It's just you find new excuses when you're playing in a solo game. But there's still people that don't want to take responsibility for their losses will still find excuses. To so a lot of this tweet, a lot of this, a lot of this is wrong. A lot of this is very wrong. But I have a way better tweet. Uh, shout out to John Nitty. You guys should follow John Nitty FGC. This guy's sick. He's another Zoss player. He plays like a Justice. He plays a bunch of fighting games. He streams sometimes. You guys should follow. Anyways, to me, the biggest reason uh, is that it costs zero dollars and zero cents to try any MOBA. Asking someone to pay sixty dollars just to see if you like a game is asking a lot and is antiquated for games that focus on multiplayer. In my opinion, king shit, absolute fucking king shit. Fighting games, most for the most part, will always stay niche because they will always require a price. Right? I think that AI. When that came out, not having a price tag and you being able to do free to play and buy a character if you like them, but you could lab any character, sick, super tight. Fantasy Strike, full free to play, super sick. Prohala, full free to play, sick, right? Great games. Honestly, all great games in their own right, in their own merit, but they already do one thing right. They are free to play at the base, and then they allow you, truth from the lovable hot dog man himself, exactly, you know, you know who Nitty is, that's what I'm saying. This is like one of the best takes I've seen on why MOBAs are more popular. Free to play games in general will always be more popular. And the reason why is because they, they have zero entry barrier. The entry barrier of turning on your computer and or console and hitting download is fucking non-existent unless you don't have a PC or console. In the case of Brawlhalla, you only need a damn smartphone. It's crazy, it's it's wild bro, fucking wild. And some MOBAs you only need a phone. League of Legends Wild Rift comes. To um, for card games, you only need a phone for Magic the Gathering Arena, right? So free to play games are always inherently going to be more popular uh, because of the fact that there's no price tag associated, right? Now, the other thing I want to say about this is I think that the antiquated part, it's a little subjective, but when you look at one of the biggest flagship franchises that used to sell Xboxes being free to play, that's a big indicator, at least for the multiplayer. That's a big indicator that maybe some devs, even if they don't want to, are starting to understand you know the new the new meta the battle pass meta i don't i'm not a big fan of the battle pass meta but i think that it allows people to get into the game in a way that they want to right like i can play halo infinite for free all i want and i'm leveling my battle pass and if i'm like you know what this game is so tight i don't want to experience the campaign but i do want to support the devs 10 bucks there you go got the battle pass for this three months for this six months for this one month whatever it is right 10 bucks there you go i want this six skin in league Five bucks. There you go. You know, this skin's sick. I love this character. This game's super sick and it's free to play. I don't mind spending a, a few dollars. Now, of course, there are people who go a little overboard and those people are called whales. But regardless, right, this is the new, this should be the new medium. This is the new meta when it comes to competitive game. If you have like a single player game, yeah, you should charge for your experience. You should charge $40, $60, $70 for that single player story based emergent gameplay experience. But whenever it comes to competitive games, there's really no reason for that game to have a price tag on it. Even if the game is free and you have to pay for characters, you have to grind for or pay for characters, that's also a OK, right? I think Fantasy Strike does it the best where all the characters are free and then you just buy skins and taunts and victory screens. 
That's pretty cool. And then victory poses and end poses. You, you can buy those things, right? I think that that's really dope. I think that's that's pretty good. Um, and then Brawlhalla has it the opposite way. They have a battle pass, and then they have it so you can grind for and or buy characters and skins. You cannot grind for skins, but you can buy skins. And you can grind for the characters, or you can buy the characters. And in training mode, you can lab every character. It doesn't fucking matter. You can, you can lab every character. KI was ahead of its time, and that's, yeah, the KI model was ahead of its time, it's right there, I didn't even look, oops, it's, it's right there, KI model was ahead of its time, it's so true, I think that this is like the determining factor to why the big AAA fighting games are still niche, right, when you look at the amount of traction and players, for, if you look at, you, you can just look at our viewership and know that our, you know, that fighting games are a little pitiful when it comes to their player bases. When you look at when you go to Steam, uh, Perfect Legend does it every now and then. Perfect, hey, what's up, Pink Cat? When you go to when you uh, what's what's up, dude? When you when you if you can go look on Steam charts if you want, but Perfect Legend did this thing once where he showed all of the fighting games, all of the like relevant modern fighting games, and how many players they had. Poor little Soul Calibur was down there at like three hundred and twelve concurrent viewer. I mean concurrent players uh, on Steam, right? Brawlhalla was up in forty thousand. And that was off peak hours for Brawl, by the way. It gets better. And, and then all the other fighting games were literally nowhere near Brawlhalla. And do you know what Brawlhalla has that those other games don't have? One, casual appeal and accessibility. Two, a free-to-play model. The two things we, we just talked about in this little talk segment, like, just wound up into one. It's fucking crazy. It's, I hope that eventually fighting, games devs, fighting game devs get that. The KI, I think the KI model is perfect. I think that they could even just charge less out of the game. Like, charge fucking 20 bucks. Sure. You want to try a game? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. 20 bucks, try the game. Get yourself a little starter pack. Four characters, five characters, whatever. Severe dev support. Severe drought of dev support, you mean? That's what you mean to say. Yeah. Yeah, because people aren't... When they're first getting into a game, they're not worried about matchup knowledge, mind games, and character pools. They're not worried about any of that. They're looking to have fun, maybe learn the game, and that's it. Have fun and maybe learn the game. The first things first. I don't know if you guys know this. Don't know if you guys know this. Video games are supposed to be fun. Fun. Yeah, Fantasy Strike's sick. I like Fantasy Strike. Video games are supposed to be fun. So that's the first thing that most people look for in the video game that they want to play. It's fun. And they're like, okay, well, this game's free. If it's not fun, I'll just never play it again. It was free. If you buy a $60 game, you're like, well, this wasn't fun. And you already passed your window to return it. You're like, fuck, my 60 bucks. Maybe I won't, I, won't, I won't try another one of those fighting game things. Those That one fighting game I played, it didn't seem very fun. It cost me $60. That's kind of crazy. I probably shouldn't do that again. I'll just play Apex Legends. It's fine. Oh, dude, I'll just twerk on kids in Fortnite and spam build and do the Orange Justice and the Dougie. Like it's, that's, that is why those games are so popular. I would love to see, like, I, I know that Project Dell is going to be free, but I would love to see one of the other big titans of fighting games transition over a free-to-play model. Not a, not a Fantasy Strike or a starter pack of DOA or um, Soul Calibur, rest in peace. I would love to see a Mortal Kombat or a Street Fighter or a Tekken free-to-play for the next generation and see, tell me how that does for you. Hell, with a with a fucking two month, three month, ten dollar battle pass and skins you can pay for by paying like two or three dollars, and an inherently unfair grind system unless all you do is grind ranked. And guess what? It's still gonna be more popular than it is right now. I'll tell you that, one hundred percent. It could literally be Street Fighter Five plastered all over you. It could be the same fucking game and just be free to play, and it would still get more players. It doesn't even have to be fresh and new. Just the fact that it'll have a new audience potentially is more than enough. Because so many people that have never tried Street Fighter V that don't know if they'll like it or not, they're gonna start getting into the game. There's so many Street Fighter players who are like, man, Street Fighter V sucks, this game's trash, I hate it, I should never pay $60 for this shit. And you told them, hey, but what if it was free? They're like, it was not so bad after all, shit, you know? That's just, that's kinda it, that's all I wanted to talk about. I am ready to get into some games. I also wanna talk about, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, I think Friday, because tomorrow we're gonna be doing Halo Infinite. But tomorrow, that's fuck. Friday, I want to talk about if Parsec is killing games or not. Killing, I don't know if, I don't know if that's the right word. Clickbaiting. 
but I want to talk about on Friday if Parsec is killing fighting game. Anyways, if you're watching this on the YouTubes, please hit like and subscribe and uh, comment how you feel about all of the sick topics I talked about today. Fighting game accessibility when it comes to actually inputs and fighting game accessibility when it comes to price tag. Because, you know, we're not made of money, bro. I got like $2 in my wallet. This is Beanie Thuggish signing out. Peace.